Hello, tonight we'll be looking at the game Team Innocent using the excellent emulator Medifin. What we want to look for is to see if the uh, text is compressed as well as how it's loaded. Does it use a pointer system or is it just read through like a script block or you know something like that. Um, Medifin's a pretty nice emulator in that you know it's a full feature debugger. It can also do uh, run traces out to a file as well as trace, at least for the PCFX PCE, you know, ability to trace the uh, BIOS calls being made. We'll actually be taking advantage of that feature tonight, the uh, BIOS calls, because one of the nice things is, is a lot of these games just use the BIOS to display, you know, the uh, font on screen. And with that, we can write down the SJS characters being displayed. No need for us to go ahead and convert it somehow or, you know, write them down or, you know, something like that. So. With that said, let's go ahead and get uh, started. Alright, to bring up the debugger, just go ahead and hit Alt-D. And as you can see, I have it paused at the currently uh, executing instruction. Now on this screen, if you wanted to, we can step through the instructions one at a time while all executing them, hitting the S key. Or if you want, you can hit the R key and resume. And the other options are you can go up and down, you know, look at the uh, instructions, as well as hit Enter, go into, you know, any place within this, or any address I should say within this assembly here. And you can also look at all the registers of course, and you can even edit them as well if you want to. But we want to go ahead and go to a different screen for right now, which is Alt 4. On this screen, this is our uh, BIOS uh, call log screen. Here we can see, you know, what kind of calls is being made into the BIOS, such as is it using the uh, BIOS font, or is it using, you know, or is it uh, making new CD calls, that type of thing. To enable it, we'll just go ahead and hit T, which you see it says logging enabled now. And then we'll go ahead and hit Alt 1 to get back to the uh, disassembly screen. Then we'll hit R, and then let it go ahead and do its thing. And then we'll hit Alt D to get back off of it. And then uh, we'll just go ahead and go through it. Alright, we hit. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, just keep going through whatever key you have to keep going through it. Go ahead and hit that, of course. <laughs> Alright, get through right now. Alright, we've got some text on screen. I'm going to wait till we get something a little bit longer. I think this one will do for us. Alright, go ahead and hit Alt D, hit S to stop it. Or, well, step into it. <laughs> Alright, then go ahead and Alt F, Alt 4, and that'll load, as you can see, our BIOS uh, message screen. Alright, we'll just go ahead and scroll up, and as you can see, it's using the uh, BIOS font. I basically want to go up to, you know, the start of our sentence here, which is a little bit ways up. Alright, here we go. Let's start right here. Alright, as you can see, it's getting called multiple times as far as the letters go. Not sure why, I'm not sure if that's the BIOS doing it or if it's a game doing it. They really paid attention, so not a big deal though. Alright, for this we want to go ahead and write down our uh, hex characters for the uh, SJs. 826C, uh, 817C, Five and nine zero eight F. Then, so out of curiosity, we'll go ahead and look at RAM real quick just to see if this is unique or anything like that. So we can kind of get an idea. Now, you know, also where it's at, which we'll be using later to see if it's loaded by a pointer or if it's loaded just, you know, straight through the script or not. Alright, for that we hit Alt 3. And then, as you can see, we're just selling the CPU physical. We would try and search this. But this, this thing is way too large for many to search through, so we'll have to go to the actual RAM portion. To get to that, you want to hit either the less than sign or greater than sign. For us, we'll be hitting the uh, less than or the uh, greater than sign. I'm sorry about that. Getting a little dyslexic there. All right, we go to RAM, and then we go ahead and do a search on this, which is just hitting S and then typing in the uh, hex we just wrote down. So here we go, we're at uh, 32FA3 for our RAM position. 
try and do another search. Just hit, you know, down to get below it, and then hit search again. As you can see, we're being brought to the same position, so that means it's unique, which is good. It makes it a little bit easier. That way, we don't have to keep searching and to figure out if we, you know, got an exact match or, you know, what have you. So, all right, so we know where it's at in RAM, but let's go ahead and look at it in a hex editor. My hex editor of choice for this type of thing is Mad Edit. The reason why is because it can sew edges, you know, pretty easily without need of a table or anything. Uh, your choice may vary, so, you know, use whatever you like. Alright, we'll go ahead and uh, off screen I'm copying the hex characters to paste into it. And then we'll go ahead and uh, check it out. Alright, I already have the ISO loaded, so let's go ahead and do a search. Uh, do a find. I'll paste in that uh, hex string. I'll go ahead and check out that. And find it. And, as you can see, the text is uncompressed, which is pretty nice. Makes it a little bit easier. So you can see right now, we're looking at like, it looks like a table here. It looks like it's all in one lump. Now, usually when it's like this, my thoughts are it's going to use like a pointer system. Because if it was an actual script block that it just, you know, reads straight through, obviously there'd be code between everything. It wouldn't just kind of, you know, hit it like this. Or it wouldn't, you know, load it or read through it like this. It's possible though, I suspect. But, you know, most of the time they'll have, you know, code between it. As you can see, just kind of scrolling up, kind of looking to see if uh, there's any, uh, like, uh, any ideas of a pointer system in here. Which it's possible looking at these, that these could be pointers. Not sure though. One thing I forgot to mention, or well, I guess I can mention now, is that, you know, Hack the PCFX is kind of nice. When reading, like, a byte, a short word, a double word, such as like that. Well, actually, I think words like large, you can read four bytes, but anyways, uh, when reading like that, it has to be aligned, meaning that. When it reads, it has to be, you know, starting either, you know, 0, 4, you know, basically it has to kind of fit in, you know, like in here, it has to fit in like this, you know, be every 4, it can't be, you know, unaligned or it won't read it correctly. So, kind of nice in that, you know, you, all you have to do is look right here, obviously this can't be a pointer because it would, you know, it doesn't even match anything, and this possibly could be. So, one thing I also need to mention that, in case you didn't know, is when it reads it from memory, it's going to, you know, uh, basically swap it backwards. Uh, you know, instead of being, it reading E0, A0, 13, then 00, it'll actually go the other way when it reads it, it'll be 0, 0, 1, 3, A0, E0. So, if I remember correctly, this is called Little Indian, but if I get that wrong, well, sorry. <laughs> I always keep forgetting which one's which, so, no big deal, though. Just remember when you're reading these to swap them backwards. Anyways, like I said, these could be pointers. I'm not quite certain because you look at 13A0E0, it doesn't really match, you know, where our text is. But then again, you think about it, when it reads this in, it's not necessarily going to match up with the ISO. So, not a huge deal because, I mean, we can always figure that out later. You know how it is, just looking at how it loads in RAM. So, with that said, we do know the text is uncompressed, which is great. So let's go ahead and do our second portion and see if it's loading it through like a pointer system or something else. Like I said, it's suspect to be a pointer system. That'd be the most easiest choice I would imagine. So, alright, so we know our text is at 32FA3. So the question is, is if you look before it, you kind of see this marking here. Usually what a lot of the games will do is they'll end their sentences somehow. Whether it be, as you can see, what I have highlighted, zero, 00, maybe FF, you know, something that can be kind of obvious usually. Most of the time it is. So. What I'm suspecting is this is the actual start of our sentence, and that's the end of the previous sentence. You never know, it could be the other way around. This could be the start right here. I'm not sure, but basically the easiest way to find out is we'll place a read breakpoint in Mendefin and see what happens. So I'm just going to write down the address 32F9E. And then we'll hit Alt-1, get back to our disassembly screen, hit Shift-W for our right breakpoints, and then type it in 32F9E, and hit Enter. And I probably should mention to make a save breakpoint sometime before the text appears. Not a huge deal, as you can hit F11 to restart the game and kind of, you know, go back through it. But luckily for me, I always save it usually at the title screen, that way I have a good starting point. You know, from there I'll kind of make save uh, 
save games beforehand uh, for text like being displayed. But so I'll go ahead and F7, and we'll head back to the title screen, and then we'll go through this and you know kind of wait it out till we get back to our text, and hopefully it'll break and to be a debugger, and then we'll know that definitely does load from that location. Text loading now. Let's go ahead and see what happens here. Alright, it looks like you know, I didn't load it from there. So, let's see where I put it at. Here to F9E, so not a huge deal. It didn't seem to be our start there, so not a big deal at all. So, let's go ahead and go back and double check everything 32F9E and I just noticed it did a right breakpoint instead of a repair point. Good thing I noticed this, right? But not a big deal. <laughs> to actually do a read breakpoint, let's go ahead and erase that. We'll do shift R. You think I would have noticed this when saying shift W since you know W equals right, but ah well, you know, not a big deal. <laughs> Alright, so let's go ahead and actually enter in the right uh, enter in the address into the right thing we want. And then uh, <laughs> go ahead and go back to the room.